these fools, they'll never learn. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Foo for Thought podcast. We are back. We are back minus one, unfortunately. Right. Cyrus has got some some sniffles. Yeah, his bitch ass caught a cold. Do you know what? I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> uh, you nailed it. I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Meh. Yeah, he got a cold and <laughs> I'm too sick to come over. <laughs> it's not COVID, it's just a cold. So I appreciate him not giving us a cold but still bitch ass bitch ass yeah so just the two of us today which is fine and dandy with me uh if you don't know the podcast my name's sean i am the host and this is my wife devon she's Hello. my co-host also right. and then every two weeks we review a martial arts film and boy howdy as the americans say we are going out uh, we are seeing 2023 out with style with a bang is it is it with the bang yeah, well, <laughs> well, there's banging in it. <laughs> there's is banging in it. Plenty of banging. Ugh. Um, but uh, Lord, I think with a bang, I think we we did something interesting. We we mostly do, you know, uh, whether it's Shaw Brothers, Golden Harvest, uh, modern kung fu films, whatever it may be. Uh, this one we decided to go on occasion. We like to we'll do something a little goofy. silly, get a little goofy, have a little fun. That's right. And uh, this I don't know if I would classify this one as fun. Oh, I had fun with it. I know you did. I had fun with it. Yeah, you were cackling over there. I had, I had a good time. Oh, I guess we should say what film we're doing. Samurai Cop. <laughs> I forgot the name of it. That good, she forgot the name of it. Samurai Cop. Samurai Cop from 1991. Uh, we thought we'd do uh, a bit of a silly one. And uh, this may be the silliest film in existence. Um, God, yes. We'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, but first, we usually talk about what we've seen, what we've uh, done this week. That's right. Uh, have we watched anything good this week? I mean, so, okay. So, uh, today is the uh, December 30th. Uh, so, we've been off the entire week for Christmas. Yeah. And I would say that we've had a movie extravaganza. A movie we've watched bonanza, a, even. a number of films this week. Yes. So, I mean... I'd have to like look at my letterbox to even remember all of them. I got a yellow list. All right, hit it. Um, so everyone is probably interested in this film and what we feel about it because uh, it's it's a big film amongst the action cinema community. We sat down and watched Silent Night, uh, oh, which yeah. is John Woo's new film, and uh, we had a, a difference of opinion. Yes. Um, I did not like it. He didn't like it at all. I didn't care for it much at all. I thought it was fine. You know, my, my, it's, you know, fine is a, a word that I go to a lot with movies. If I didn't hate it and, you know, I wasn't blown away by it, I typically say, uh, it's fine. I wouldn't say it was garbage. I definitely wouldn't say like it's the worst film ever. Right. Um, is it one of Wu's worst films? Definitely. Definitely one of his worst films. Um, I, I, if his name didn't pop up, I would have never guessed that this was a John Woo film. It doesn't feel like a John Woo film. And, you know, there's people online saying that it's not as good as Face Off or Hard Target, but it's better than Broken Arrow. Fuck off. You are mistaken. Broken Arrow you are is insane. Amazing. You are insane. <laughs> Broken Arrow is fucking awesome. John Travolta, Christian Slater. Come on. A train? You, yeah, you shove it up your butt. I agree. Uh, I don't see how you think uh, Silent Night is better than Broken Arrow, Fuck but no. I get it. People, different strokes for different folks. Mm. People saying it's it's a mature era for Wu, and that it's something a little different. I don't see it. <laughs> I I didn't. I also the silent gimmick, the whole thing. This, by the way, if you don't know about the film, no one speaks in the film. It didn't bother me. I thought it might bother me. It didn't bother me that much. But it, the film would have been better with people speaking because there yeah. would have been more exposition and more explanation. Yeah, a bit. Um, so I, that's that's the way I yeah. look at things. We should probably get through this a little quick because we have there's a number of films. We watched Aquaman two, right? Aquaman two we went to the cinema to watch Aquaman two. It was fun. You know what, guys? 
stop shitting all over DC. Aquaman 2's fine. It's, it was fun. It's not even fine. It's good. Yeah. It's a good adventure action film. It was fun. Don't expect the Dark Knight. Don't expect the Avengers or anything like that. It's a fun action adventure yeah. with solid fight sequences and action sequences. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, Everyone's back. His brother's back. Black Manta's back. Uh, fucking the woman who beat up Johnny Depp's back. Everyone's back. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I know a lot of people said she was going to get cut out of the film. She is not cut out of the film. She's no. in plenty. Yeah. I mean, you're not as heavy as the first movie, but yeah, she's in it a decent amount. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good film. It's it's not going to blow any minds, but it's a it's a three-star film. Uh, we saw Priscilla. We did see... I haven't got that on my list. Shame. Uh, we did see Priscilla. Very uh, good. If anyone doesn't know what Priscilla is, it's about the wife of Elvis Presley. Yeah, Priscilla Presley. Uh, it's very good. I'll be honest. It's high on my top 10 of the year. Yeah, it was a high. very good movie. I think it's definitely one of the best of the year. Uh, Jacob Elordi is doing wonderful things at the moment. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he, he was in Priscilla. He's in um, Saltburn, which recently came out, which, by the way, is the most divisive film out at the moment. Like People either love Saltburn or fucking hate it. I would love for you to see it. I would really love for you to see it. Um Hold on. If we look panicked, by the way, it's because our cat is chewing our wires. So she's hopping up on the ottoman that we have, and she's chewing our wires. So we have to squirt her with water, um, because that's the only thing that gets her to stop doing it. Uh, so we're trying to get her to learn. Not the best time to do it during a podcast, but that's when the wires appear. So that's when she goes nuts. Um, Sorry. So yeah. Uh, anyway, Priscilla, excellent film. Really, really good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. Um, again, high on my top, probably in my top three of the year, if I'm honest. Uh, but yeah, Jacob Elordi is doing great things. And I can't remember the girl's name that plays Priscilla, but she's amazing as well. Rebel um, Moon? Hmm? Rebel Moon? Yes, Rebel Moon. On Netflix? Another film that's being divisive. A lot of people shitting on this film, saying it's one of the worst films of the year, which is nuts. I don't think it's the worst film of the year. There, I, I, have, I have a few gripes. Um, some things they could have... Uh, fleshed out more um like, well but you know, it's gonna be three films okay fine or two films. i don't know how many it's gonna be but you know it's gonna be th i think it's three films i don't know i mean i well okay well if that's the case i hope they throw in some backstory for i agree i yeah. agree i think it's a solid start to the series it's a fine sci-fi film sophie but sophia but butella's very good she nails it and the action is fine. It, lots of slow-mo. Expect lots and lots and lots of slow-mo. But it's not a terrible film. It's a fine film. Yeah. Uh, no complaints about it, really. Other than there are a lot of characters, and we know very little about them. Yep. Uh, the last one I've got is we watched Killers of the Flower Moon last night. Right. Um, which is a fantastic film. Um, but it... <laughs> Devin's ready to squirt the cat because she's literally hovering over a wire with her mouth as though she's about to eat it. Uh, she's an idiot. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, one of the best of the year, but it's very dour. It is. It's very dour and very sad and very heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, everyone's amazing in it. Yeah. Uh, very well acted. Needs to get an Oscar. Very well acted. I don't see anyone beating her this year. She's incredible in it. Uh, DiCaprio's, like, his transformation is he doesn't <laughs> seem like DiCaprio in it. And De Niro, in my opinion, should get an Oscar as well. I think he's amazing in this film. Yeah. Uh but yeah, go in expecting very, very dark and sad content. It's not content. Jesus Christ. I sound like a YouTuber. I guess I am a YouTuber, <laughs> but I sound like a YouTuber. Um uh, yeah, expect a, a a kind of sad, uh heartbreaking film that's got some dark content to it. Don't go in expecting, you know, roses and and, and rainbows, but it's good. <laughs> it's great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Also I was gonna mention we watched uh, uh Hunger Games, Snake and Eagles Shadow. Shadow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Let's like do it again. Snake and something. Uh, Hunger Games. Okay. Cats and snakes. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's oh uh, the ballad and snakes. The the ballad of songbirds and snakes. Songbirds and snakes. <laughs> that film wasn't bad at all. It wasn't. I actually like for a Hunger Games film. I think it's actually pretty solid. Yeah. And it may be my favorite Hunger Games film. Yeah, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really good. The acting's good. The action set pieces are pretty solid, and it plays out really, really well. Um, it's 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 long, but yep. it, it takes you on quite a journey. It's pretty good. And that girl in it, 
Her fucking voice, lots of singing in this film. Yes. Her voice is incredible. Yeah. Um, I don't know her name, um, but her voice is amazing. She's uh, she was in um, what's that musical that Lin Manuel Miranda did? It was on HBO. You know that there's more than one, right? Yeah, <laughs> not not Hamilton. <laughs> um, the film. oh, you mean um um. Uh... The Latino film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, in the uh, Heights? No. Um, it wasn't. Called although that. Heights? Although. Oh, uh, wish. Oh, I thought you were not in the. Was she in in the Heights or was she in the other one? Why is why can't I remember it? Oh, I only know. Um, the Heights. I think she. No, we that. watched the other one. I don't know Fucking what you're talking about. Shit. Oh, the one with Andrew Garfield. No. Yeah, that as well. Tick, tick, boom. Yeah, I know that, but no, that's this not is the great. one. This is great. We have no idea what we're talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I just can't think of the goddamn movie. Really? I can't even think of a third one. What's the other one you did? Hold on. I bet you're all yelling at us now, like, oh, it's I know, this, right? it's this. All you Lin-Manuel Miranda fans out there. Anyway, the new Hunger Games, while she looks at that, the new Hunger Games is good. Oh, and wait a minute. He didn't do it. Some... Oh, there you go, then. All right. Some of the uh, fisticuffs in it is quite decent. It's shot very, very well. Captured very well. Very dynamic camera work. So I, I enjoyed that film. I thought it was really good. Not one of the best of the year, but certainly up there as, as a pretty decent film. All right. Are you done? No, I'm sorry. She's... Oh, I thought she was in West Side Story. Oh, was she? That's where she's in. West Side Story. West Side goddamn story. I could not I think, think of the name in, of that. In the Heights as well. Oh, was she? West Side See? Story was a Spielberg film. I know that. Okay. So yeah, you were wrong. Right. It. But that's where I was thinking I saw her. Okay, what's her name? Uh, Rachel Ziegler. Zegler. Rachel Zegler. There you go. Look her up. She's a very good singer and she's quite pretty as well. So, fellas and uh, uh, ladies that like ladies, you might like it. Um, so, yeah, good film. Anyway, she was not in the Heights. In 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 the Heights. She wasn't in in the Heights. No, it was West. You were thinking of. I think you were thinking of West Side Story. Anyway, let's jump into the film. Okay. Yes. Um, I got stuff to say about this one. I Um, have a million things to say about this. Yes. Uh, So film. I don't know if I would call it a film. (laughs) So Samurai Cop, nineteen ninety one. Samurai Cop. Uh, directed, if you can say it was directed by someone. I don't I don't think there was any direction in this. Very little. Amir Shervan, I think you say his name. Amir Shervan. Starring Matthew Caridus, or Caridus, who isn't listed as Matthew Caridus. He actually changed his name to Matthew Caridus later on. I think he's Matthew, have you got him listed? Matthew Matt Hannon. Hannon. Is it Hannon or Hatton? Hannon. Hannon. With uh, two N's. Matt Hannon has got Mark Fraser in it, Robert Zadar, and Melissa Moore. Okay. Um, I don't know who any of them played, but there you go. Uh, a few things about this film is uh, it's low budget. <laughs> Shocker. Um, Shocker. The majority of shots in this film were apparently done in one take. They did no more takes than one take, and then just said, oh yeah, that's it, we got it, we nailed it. So, all the fuck-ups and kind of shitty takes are in the film, because uh, they just took what they got. Um, the film uh, was only shot in the day, because the director couldn't afford lights to light up the night scenes, which is great. Okay. Um, yep. Also, a little interesting fact about the main actor, he used to be Sylvester Stallone's uh, bodyguard, and he once went to prison for stealing a Rembrandt painting. Uh, he organized right. a heist with a stunt coordinator, and they stole a painting, and he went to prison. Was that after this movie or before? Uh, that was after this movie. Uh, apparently, he had no idea of the cult status of this movie. He had no clue whatsoever of the cult status of this movie. There's a cult status for this movie? Yeah, people love this film. Hmm. Oh, you 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 don't... Okay, uh, we looked at it differently. So go on, you tell your... Uh, All right. Give us your take on <clears throat> Samurai Cop. Hated this movie. Um, and so when Sean informed me of the the movie that we're going to be doing, and he said, you know, we're going to have fun with this episode, he said along the lines of Miami Connection. Miami Connection is a goddamn cinematic masterpiece compared to this. There's a level of ridiculousness in Miami Connection that I can, uh, that I'm okay with. I am not okay with the ridiculousness of this film. Um, really? But 
but I also, there's nothing about it where I think Miami connection, they're purposely having fun, right? No. You don't think that they're purposely having a little fun? Miami connection is meant to be taken deadly seriously. Hmm. It's just so bad that it ends up being fun. They think Dragon Sound is a legitimate cool name for a band, and that the band is cool. Fine. Well, yeah. Fine. But this... I think. There was no... Well, okay, fine. Regardless, there was... Miami Connection was fun. Yes. Miami Connection was fun and enjoyable to watch. Yes. For me, there was nothing enjoyable about this movie. Interesting. I... And obviously, you know... A part of that for me is because, you know, the whole one take business. And so looking at just all the terrible takes, the terrible, if they're, you know, whatever editing, if there was any editing, whatever. There was no editing. Right, exactly. It just, right. So it was just, because it wasn't put together very well, it, it, that didn't help. So all the bad things about it, nothing was kind of at least attempted to be polished over or made to look better. Um, I didn't care for the leading man. I did not care for him. In what um, way you didn't care for him? He, I mean, he sucked. <laughs> I didn't like that. And I, what I didn't, what I don't, and this is something that I think happens with some... Give me the squirt. <laughs> with some movies in like the 80s or 90s, how like the macho guy and how he thinks he's god's gift to women and has to portray this kind of yeah this kind of macho you know ladies man who every woman wants to fuck and that's what happened with this guy and it was gross i didn't like it i didn't care for it i mean i could just i feel like this is just this i mean i'd have to just get into everything about oh we're about um, you know multiple things about this movie um it's really interesting um, I didn't have, yeah, I didn't have fun with it. That's, that's, I, I find that quite interesting. Plus, don't get me, oh my god, the, the love scenes. Ew. Those are, those, those, all those ladies, all the ladies, okay, question, you know, you weirdos who like this movie, this, uh, who think it's like a cult classic, the ladies in this movie, are they like adult film stars? No. None of them are adult film actresses? No, I don't think so. Interesting. Fine. Why? Then I feel bad for them. Well, I feel bad for them in general. A lot of actresses get topless. I know. I feel bad for them in general. Just having to make out with this dude and have this man touching it. It was on this point. I will say two things. Ugh. A. Every single kiss in this film is fucking gross. Lots of tongue and lip sucking, and it's gross. I got a lot of nicknames. Also. There is a scene in this film where, no word of a lie, you see labia. You see, I'm going to use a word, I don't want to use it, but I'm going to use it. You see slit. After that first love scene, and then like when the second one was coming, I honestly didn't look at it. Didn't want to. Oh, that there's a bit where a woman opens it. You, you see every like everything. It, you, it, you, it's, it's only a glimpse, but oh lord. Yeah, and I feel like, yeah, he's also using this movie to... Yeah, basically feel up a bunch of women. I think it was all the director. It was the, the director wanted it all. The, it, it was all him. Mm. Um, I didn't like this movie. So I, I will say, uh, in my opinion, the film is... Look, get your friends together. Crack open a few beers if that's your poison. Smoke some weed if that's your poison. Or do whatever. And just watch this film. Mm-mm. Because you'll have a great time. Mm-mm. But it does get a bit tired by the end the 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 mistakes the gaffes the issues with it it does get a bit tiresome i found myself in the last oh by the way this film feels like it's 14 hours long i after 40 minutes i mean i was done with this movie pretty quickly but after 40 minutes i was just like Ugh. Oh, I, was I was still on board 100 percent. i wanted by the end i was just like i don't know if we should be married anymore Oh, okay, okay. It was a bit. I was a bit uh, Al Pacino. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in because I, I was like, "Oh, this is getting boring." Then something would happen. I'd be like, "Oh no, this is fucking awesome." Yeah, no, I was. Oh, okay. This mo- this movie, this thing, this thing, just rubs me the wrong way. Okay, in every aspect. Well, let's dive into the film. 
Let's talk about it a bit because uh, I think there's a lot to talk about. I, I honestly, I have never, while watching a film, typed out so many quotes in my goddamn life. So many quotes. Uh, don't get me started on the ones with the what was his name? Black Frank. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. First off, I guess my my first note was about the opening music. Oh, okay. it sounded like a video game. Yes, it did. It was like it video did. game music, so I was like, okay. My first note is about the opening conversation. Ugh. Why was everyone growling? I didn't understand. The, the, the first conversation, I had no idea what was being said. Thank you. Yeah, I my, my second note is it's only been two minutes and I'm already confused about what's happening in this movie. So there's a gang. There's a gang called the Katana Gang. Right. Um, who do who who deal in drugs? Right, and basically the film, v- put very simply, is cops and bad guys. That's the film. Yeah, but there's some growling at the start. There's like, the sound in this film is awful, and uh, <laughs> I didn't understand a single bit of the conversation. Oh, God. But then we get introduced to our hero, uh, Joe. Is that his name? Yeah, Joe, known as, but his friends call him. Samurai. His friends call him Samurai. By the way, they don't. About three people mention Samurai in the whole film. Um, so Do Joe... you want to tell them why he's called Samurai? Yes. Because he was trained by the Japanese masters in Japan. He's a martial arts expert. You wouldn't have guessed it. <laughs> you wouldn't have guessed it. You certainly wouldn't. You certainly wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I don't see any of that. He was trained poorly then. Some sweet fight scenes in this one. Um, so, the first quote I put is uh, basically they're going to go ahead and they're, they're, they're doing a sting on a drug, or a drug bust is what they're doing. The sting uh, makes no sense. Drug deal. And Frank, his partner, goes... Black guy, by the way, with an unfortunate jerry curl. Yes, and we'll get, we'll get into why he never mentioned he's black a little later on. Um, he says, are you sure this is a good bust? And Jim just goes... Joe. Joe. Joe just goes, yep, cocaine. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's, it. that's, what, that's what he says. And then so, and then so they're driving around in a car, and then there's a helicopter with uh, a lady cop whose name I don't recall. <laughs> um, the I mean the blonde hoe is how I'm going to refer to her because okay, yeah. of because of she is horny in this film. Yeah, because of some stuff you know, some of her, of her dialogue later in the oh, film. She's a horny girl. She's a yeah. So blonde hoe, blonde hoe cop. Um, flying around in a helicopter, and she's supposed to be observing these bad guys. They're following uh, Samurai Joe and Frank are following these bad guys in a van, and she's flying overhead. Yeah, and so the, basically, the bad guys are supposed to meet some other bad guys at the marina. Yes, and what exchange drugs for money? Drugs for money, right? Yeah, <clears throat> but stuff. here's Classic. my. Classic here's my thing. One of, here's my thing. One of the lines was it was uh, yes. where he told uh, you know chick in the helicopter yes. uh, to 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 stay out of sight, and I was just like, it's a goddamn helicopter. How's a helicopter supposed to stay out of sight? Oh. How's she supposed to keep an eye on these bad guys for them and be, and be out of sight? But then, uh, this whole uh, this whole exchange, this whole exchange, <laughs> I. What he says originally is he calls her up and he goes, where are you? And she goes, I'm landing. Right. And now he's just like, no, 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 stay up there. Yeah, stay up in the air. He doesn't know where she is, though. Yeah. She could be anywhere. Right. Anyway, I mean, don't, yeah. And then, ugh. So she's supposed to be keeping an eye on these bad guys for them. So she can let Samurai Joe and Frank know where they are. Yeah. But somehow she loses them. Samurai and Frank lose them. This exchange happens. Bad guys go off in a boat. But then Frank and Samurai somehow manage to catch up to the bad guys in the van. And tries to... And then ends up uh, killing them, right? Yeah. There's this ridiculous car chase. The guy on the boat gets away. Right. and, And that's my thing, though. Because at the end... And we'll get back to the chase scene. But at the end of this chase... You know, um, so oh, it's this horrible chase where they're trying to shoot each other. You know, Frank is, you know, leaning his arm out of, you know, shooting at the van. And, and Joe was like, shoot, shoot. And it's, shoot I mean, him. Shoot, shoot him. him. It's awful. Shoot. The shoot. sound is awful. And, the, and it's so clear during this whole process that 
they're apparently supposed to be in a marina, but there's clearly shots where they're obviously elsewhere in places where the background, what you see of the background doesn't look anything like a marina or any place where boats hang out. No, at one point, I think they're in the it, desert. Right. It looks like one point they're supposed they're in the desert. But anyway, so there's this awful chase where in some like vacant, like dirt, like quarry or whatever the fuck. And they shoot one guy, kill one guy, and the other guy in the van who's driving, they cause him to crash, and there's this big explosion. And the guy, you know, hops out of the van, and he's on fire. And then at the end, they're just like, what did they say? It was like, they were just like, um, did I write it down? No, I didn't write it down. We're, but in the end... We're over so much. We're missing out on so much. Are we? I mean, it's all... They run over a dude at one point, and he, he just goes, oh, well, oh yeah. man, and then carries on driving. Well, yeah, and then also the effects for that, like, also, you know, but anyway, but it doesn't matter. The boat that the bad guys are in, when they take the money, all the drugs, we don't know which. Right. Uh, on the, on, all you see is, like, suitcases. On the you never see what's the boat, in them. In massive letters is boat rentals. Yes. <laughs> I love that the bad guys rented a boat. <laughs> but, like, at the end of this, they're just like, good work, or or at the end, like, um, or good job, or, or something like... um a job well done or whatever, but I'm just like, how? No, you... they say this calls for celebration. Yes, that's, that's right. right. This calls for celebration after, you know, it putting, after people. setting this dude on fire and putting his, putting him out. Yeah. And, oh, don't, and that guy, you could clearly see like, you know, this guy, he's on fire, but yet you can see him. He's laying on his stomach. His back is on fire and you clearly see his face and he's just kind of looking to the side. It almost looks like, do we get it? Yep. Are we good? Yep. <laughs> you know, the, the look on his face. And then one of the uh, Frank ends up covering his head with a blanket. But I'm just like, what do you have to celebrate about? You killed a dude. You set this, basically blew this dude up and and set him on fire. But then I was like, those other two guys got away. Yep. So there's nothing to celebrate. I would say that this assignment went very poorly. Yeah. Um. At one point, the helicopter pilot lady goes something along the lines of, do you want me up? And Joe goes, Oh, oh yeah, there's like flirting. She goes, oh, it's up. I just want you to keep it warm. She goes, oh, it's warm and ready. The fuck are you talking about? You're on duty. I'm yeah. a yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it sells out. Yeah, it was gross. Um, yeah, I thought it was funny. I, I made I made note of the uh, of the this <sighs> for the celebration. God, so many inconsistencies. Then we go to a sex scene. We immediately jump to a sex scene, which is blonde ho cop. The, the the helicopter lady. Yeah. Uh, oh no, it's not her, is it? Yeah, it is. Is she the same? No, there are two different blondes. There's the blonde no, cop. No, no, no. It's the the blonde in the helicopter, the same as the police officer in the. In yes. The... Okay. Okay. Uh, they have a sex scene, and uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like any of them. I didn't like it uh, for multiple reasons. Um, she starts. She takes his hands. And rubs the backs of his hands against her face. Gross. Which very much upset me because it it's, it's the opposite of erotic. Um, it's weird and gross. And it he's was weird and gross. And also, yeah, he's. Oh, and it's quiet as well. They don't make any noise. He's not an attractive man. Oh, don't you lie. He has this long hair, but obviously, but. I've got long but hair. But then there's. No, well, yours is. I would say yours is better. But then he has like early 90s long hair, but also a part of the problem is there are also moments in this movie where it's clear he's wearing a wig. Oh, the wig. Like a very, like, feminine, like, wig. Yes. Yes. Like, with curls, <laughs> feathered and curls, and yeah. it was so... Oh, our the first shot of him. That's right. The with first the, oh, the first shot of him. So it's clearly the wig that he's wearing at this point. And there's a baseball cap. But I don't know if the either the cap is too small or the wig is too big. Um, but it's very, and then it happens multiple times because yeah. there's another scene in the movie where it's the same thing, where the just the, the the hair and the wig is far too big for that cap, so it just sits weirdly on his head. So they had to do reshoots, but he'd cut his hair, right? So he had to. I mean, wear. I figured, I figured, but yeah, they did a terrible job. Um, at one point they are talking about Joe and they're describing exactly what he is and they're yeah. like, oh yeah, he was he was uh, uh, taught by Japanese masters in martial arts and they say, oh, we brought him over from San Diego to take down this gang. Brought him over implies you brought him from Japan or Europe. Right. They brought him over from San Diego right. to LA. Right. I don't know how far that is, but I'm pretty sure it's not that far. 
brought him Probably over. Not. Sounds like he traveled oceans right. to yeah. get to you. Um, so, <laughs> I, oh my god, there's so much to go over. So we go to the hospital, and the hospital scene is fucking wild. There's this cop. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. The scene right before that, they're back in the police station. And they're like, Captain or whatever. It goes, you know, Joe and Frank, you know, in my office right now. I love the Captain. And then, oh, he's the best actor in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like, you know, you two, in my office. And then you cut to what apparently is supposed to be a hospital. <laughs> and I was just like, okay. Guess we're not going to find out what they talked about um, because you know I assumed like next you would hear like the captain reaming them out about yeah. this horrible, you know the horrible job they did on that on that awful god awful like worst car chase I've ever seen in my life um, and that worst like sting. But nope, it just goes straight to what supposedly is a hospital. Um, so the burn victim, but it looks like <laughs> go on. It looks like they're just the reception area of some sort of office building. Definitely, hundred percent. Yeah. Um. And then, yeah, that awkward like moment with that cop who was supposed Steve. to be like, yeah, who's supposed to be guarding the burn he victim. The emotes. His face is crazy. Yeah. And then they hang out on his face far too long after he stops talking. Yes. So the burn victim is in the hospital. Right. And uh, there's a cop watching over him. And right. And then they roll up to uh to ask question, him a question. Him. Question yeah. Him. But they say his lips are too burnt. His the lips. nurse is like the nurse is like he can't talk because his lips are burnt. Yeah, and then oh uh, her, that whole exchange. There oh is oh my god, it's the best moment in the film. No, I yes <laughs> because yes. there's no reason for it. Let me tell you something. I, I've got it. I, I've got. I've Let got me the... tell you something, uh, viewers. The most cringeworthy. Just I've got the entire dialogue. Bananas conversation. Which is what yeah, I felt I felt terrible for every single woman in this movie. It's wild. Because there's there's I suppose uh, this is this batshit crazy uh interaction is I guess to further uh further promote the idea that uh Samurai Joe is a ladies man that he's the hottest thing on two legs um oh also another thing that he does anytime he sees a pretty woman he you know does does a double take or you know or tries to flirt basically like the car basically like the cartoon character you know like um um you know what i mean you're gonna get that um fuck you want me to say it yes johnny bravo not necessarily. Oh, I guess Johnny Bravo. Not necessarily Johnny oh, Bravo. I you Johnny but Bravo. you know, just those like com- like those cartoon characters. When every time they see a pretty woman, it's like a hub a hub, and their eyes. Go oh big. yeah, Pepe you know, Le Pew. The or even or he's a little more. Discreet. Oh no, he got- he's more discreet than that. He- um, yeah. but anyway, but yeah, I'm sure you know what I'm saying. And he so he does that to every single pretty woman, and basically is under the assumption that all women want to fuck him. This woman, and well, it seems, but then that. in this movie, <laughs> yes. All women do want to fuck him. So then, yes, thank you for, you know, I'm glad you, I, ugh, so cringeworthy. So yeah, go ahead. It. And so this nurse, you know, they go outside the room yep. and basically. Goes, I talk to you for a moment? And she, yeah. And she says, do you yeah. like what you see? And he goes, yep. She goes, want to touch what you see? He goes, ooh. And she goes, want to fuck me? And then goes, right. are you circumcised? Right. Then what? his dick. To see if he is circumcised, then complains that his dick's too small for her to have sex with him. And the entire time, it keeps cutting to, to, to Frank. Frank and French. <laughs> that, okay, that was another thing. That was another thing. Black Frank. So many, basically throughout the entirety. We're just getting our cap. Hello, we're back. We're back. Our stupid cat uh, caused a commotion and pulled out our audio wire, so you couldn't hear us, unfortunately. Uh, Apologize for that. Right. Uh, But yes, Frank's uh, emoting in multiple The the entire, throughout the entire movie, there's multiple moments where there's cuts to Frank, and he's just staring just blankly. Or he's going... Right. Or just making these ridiculous uh, uh, facial expressions. Our cat is Hand it over. the most annoying thing in the <laughs> world. Moon, beat it. 
Yeah. Um, it was ridiculous. This is why we go to Cyrus as we're called, by the way. Yeah. So the cat doesn't cause a commotion. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, yeah. And and then uh, uh, Frank steps forward and says that his dick is big enough to have sex with the wa- uh, with the nurse. But right. she, she walks away. So there's no fucking in that scene. No, nurse doesn't have a sex scene, does she? No. No. Um, so then we get to a Japanese bad guy, and they're at a restaurant, and he's eating with this new blonde chick who apparently owns the restaurant, and Samurai Joe we, and... We missed a huge bit. Which part? When the guy murders the burn victim. Oh, God. <laughs> he's in so the there's this... Car. I so laughed my main... ass off. Yeah, you did. <laughs> the main henchman, I call him Jaws. That's uh, my nickname for him. I have something wrong with him. Really? I don't know. His he has like his American head. American dad size bone structure. Yeah, with his face. Yeah, uh, very very wide jaw. So I called him Jaws. One of my nicknames. Uh, I'm gonna get to Samurai Joe's new nickname later. Um, in oh. a bit. Uh, but yeah, so I called him Jaws. Uh, so Jaws, and then like the main hench lady, uh, redhead, evil redhead. Yeah. Uh, so she poses as like. I mean, really, she's just wearing a light, a white like lab coat, and she goes to Steve, the cop who's supposed to be standing guard, and be like, "Hey, I gotta, you know, empty the trash can." And she has this cart with a trash can in it, and but it's covered in a blanket or something. It's it makes no sense. It really doesn't. And so they go into the room, and she, you know, uncovers the blanket, and there's Jaws, so crouched into this cart, and so he gets out of. This cart, and he has a sword. Yep. A katana sword is what it's yep. supposed to be, right? And instead you know of doing... what katana means, by the way? What does it mean again? Didn't, didn't they explain it? Yeah, it means... It means... <laughs> they say in this film that katana means Japanese sword. Pretty sure it doesn't mean Japanese sword. <laughs> uh, so he... And so my, my first thought is, you know, he's going to stab this dude. With uh, the sword. Um, but that's not what happens. He... Cuts his head off. Yeah, cuts his head off. At first I thought he was just cutting his throat. So did I. Um, and I was just like, that's a weird way to do that. Um, but no, he cuts his head off. Yeah. And then keeps the head for some reason. Yeah, what they do with it, I don't know. Yeah. Earlier and it's on, very, like, yeah. Cut Joe's head off and put it on my piano, but I don't know why he keeps yeah. this guy's head. And then this very roundabout kind of way where there's and how these bad guys escape or get out the it's, hospital. It's, so when they leave, but hang on, hang on. So when they leave this uh, supposed hospital room that this burn victim is in, so they walk out the yeah. door and right next to yeah. the door is a closed door with a dental office dental sign office. on it. It says oh, dental office. Oh, oh, well. So it's clearly like... Some like an office building, like an office yeah. park with multiple offices in it. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "Oh shit!" So this, so they're they're supposed to be in a hospital, and that's supposed to be a hospital room. And then they just walk out, and you can see clearly it's just an it's an office building, it's an office park. And as they leave, I'm not kidding when I say this. About seven people go up to them and go, "Hold up a minute." Hold right. up a minute. Right. Hold up a minute. Who are supposed to be like sir, uh, security guards. It's either hold up a minute or hold on a right. minute. Right. And you can clearly see that there are shots where they're in some sort of random, yeah, office building. But then I think they just, but then there are shots where it is a hospital. But I think they just kind of literally rolled up in a random hospital and just did some quick little yeah. little takes of them running in the hospital because I swear that one doctor because he's clearly it looks like a hospital he's clearly dressed as a, as a doctor I don't think he knew what the fuck was going on I think he was just walking down the hall doing his rounds minding his business yeah, and then he, I 100% I bet he was just like what the fuck are these dudes doing it's hey wait a minute they say hey wait a minute yeah they say it multiple times also the cop Steve he goes call security he's a cop why is he why are you, calling, why are you calling security <laughs> I you're, that too. you're the police officer <laughs> Um, I'm gonna fast forward by, uh, by a scene. Really, so the, they go. Mm. The captain does chew them out and attack them. Um, that captain is great. They convince the captain to let them stay on the job. They kiss him, and then he 
He stares for about 15 seconds. And then starts laughing. Sits down and goes to sleep. <laughs> no, he starts laughing and then closes oh, his laughs. eyes. And then he closes and his eyes. And then he closes his eyes. Sleep, which, is, which is nuts. Oh, I didn't think he was going to sleep. I thought he was just closing his eyes. Oh, it looked like he was going to sleep. Um, another quote in the next scene. I don't even know what the next scene was. Um, but uh, they say, America, land of freedom and law. Pretty sure that's not what America is. <laughs> uh, they also say, we respect the Japanese of this country, who are legitimate businessmen. Right, because... <laughs> so this is... Don't, don't tell me it's <laughs> not a good quote! This is Samurai Joe. He's at the restaurant talking to the bad, like, the bad Joe goes Japanese off. guy. He goes off. Yeah, talking about uh, talking to the bad Japanese guy. Like, you're no good, but there, I acknowledge... I acknowledge that there are good Japanese. I, uh, hold on, I'm going to put the cat in another room. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, hold on. You want to put her in the bedroom and close the yeah. door? I swear. This cat. Troublesome. She, she is so, so troublesome. She's such a busybody. She's the definition of a curious cat. Anything that's new, she's like, ooh, what's that? And wants to fuck with it. And so, of course, we don't typically record here we recorded cyrus's so she's seeing all of our excuse me she's seeing all of our equipment and yeah she just wants to investigate everything and just being a general nuisance apologies Ugh. it's all her fault really yeah i don't know why we have her but she won't apologize no she won't no um yeah restaurant scene just gonna fast forward past that yeah cool security yeah his monologue is crazy the gay waiter uh, I'm not sure I can even talk about him. Yeah, so basically what were they even, what did they ask? I don't even remember what they asked of that waiter. They were asking who owns the restaurant. Oh, right, 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 right. And I don't even understand what the point of it was. Imagine, why they made him why they made him gay. A gay, a gay stereotype ramped up to 11. But it was, but it was weird. I didn't understand he was making these noises. I didn't under I, I I didn't understand it. It didn't make any sense. He was, yeah, yeah. It wasn't even like it, it was, was offensive. It was yeah, and yeah, like you couldn't even say that it was like a typical, like a stereotypical camp, you know, version because it was so much worse than that. Yeah, and then they they even get a bit racist because they ask him his name and he's Hispanic. And he says like twelve different names. He goes, "My first name is." Yeah. Imagine just a series of Hispanic names, and uh, yeah, I couldn't even understand him, so I didn't even hear what his names were. Oh no, I, I didn't. I knew they were Hispanic though. Oh okay. Yeah, he was like Jose Gonzalez, just saying a load of shit. Oh. Yeah, very very racist. Ugh. Uh, we're gonna get into Hated more racism scene. in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Then we have a fight outside the uh, the restaurant, which I think, in my opinion, is the best shootout in the film. Really? Yeah, yeah. Right. It's funny because they shoot a guy, and it's obvious that they're just hitting him with red paintballs. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of love that. Um, and uh, we're going to fast forward past that. All it is is a shootout. It's terrible. Terrible it's shootouts. Awful. Terrible, like, deaths by henchmen when they get shot. Yeah, oh, awful. Henry. It's 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 very it's very clear that I think they just literally just pulled some people off the street and like, hey, you want to be in this movie? If you like kung fu films where like the actors go, uh, 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 and die like that, in this film they do that, but ten times worse. It takes them an hour to die. There's one dude, this big black guy, and I swear, one of my favorite. Characters. I don't think he realized like he's supposed to be. No dead nope. i don't think he realized he that his lips as he was getting shot right which i thought was funny and now. he was like just kind of standing there I love and him. just oh so if awful. you wonder who we're talking about it's the black guy in the white t-shirt with the shotgun towards the end keep your eye out for so him. fucking awful like ugh, just no. but after the shootout at the restaurant joe says to frank Oh, yeah. They're going to burn your ass. Devin? Oh, no. So they were talking. So Frank was talking about having to explain all of this to the captain. Right? And I think, and so I think it was Frank who said that, um, uh, that the captain was going to burn his ass. Okay. Please take it from here. 
Hang on. This, this is something I can't get did into. Did I even specifically write it down? Oh, I did. I certainly did. Oh, I didn't even write it down because I hated it so much. <laughs> I'm going to say it. So, yeah. So, Frank was saying that the captain was going to uh, burn his ass. And I think Joe said something along the lines of, what's well, okay. Basically, like, you're black already, so your ass is already burned. Something like that. Yeah, he actually says... Uh, so your ass is already black. He or, says, I don't know. you're going to burn... He's going to burn your ass charcoal black. And Frank says, it's already black. Right. And Joe goes, right on. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I think I did make a note about that. Where is it? Um, oh, It was... And by the way, they oh, they there's a few black jokes in this film. Uh, yeah, there are. Mostly to do with burnt asses. Oh, yeah. What did I write? I wrote <laughs> charcoal black ass to the brother man right on. <laughs> And then, because they also did this like slap too after he said it, and I, after he's after Joe said right on, and I was just like, oh god. Um, at one point, uh, the captain tells another cop to get a job, which I thought was funny as fuck. Oh yeah, he yeah, Just get a I, job. Yeah, I enjoyed the captain. Um, a woman. I'm, I, I'm bouncing around here, but honestly, just take some time out to admire the restaurant owner's lion mural. Oh um, yeah, that was it's, weird. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. Um. Someone also says. The bad guys, they're making money off selling drugs and destruction. <laughs> selling drugs and destruction? Um, also, there's a the, the owner of the restaurant at one point is wearing a, a see-through shirt, a see-through red shirt with no bra, and the pockets are the only thing that's hiding her nipples, which made me laugh. Um, then we're going to get to my favorite moment. This is the moment I laughed out louder than any at the moment. For some odd reason, Joe appears in a random nightclub. Yeah. He's in a random I guess. nightclub and some bad guys. Why I don't is it just to he Run knew he knew that the bad guys were there? No. I don't know. The bad guys turn up and there's a guy with a baseball bat. Yeah. And he goes, Hold on guys, I've got him. He then does the single worst bout of baseball bat twirling around. You Do you want to demonstrate? I don't even know if I can. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, you know, obviously I'm not doing it perfectly, but you know how you do like a figure eight like that? He's like... <laughs> it's, and I burst out. Uh, yeah, I, he did. It was the funniest thing yeah, I've seen did. in the film. Uh, yeah. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> it was um, because absurd. He says, stand back. I got him with so, so much confidence. And it looked <laughs> so <laughs> ridiculous. It's so good. So oh, ridiculous. That bit made me laugh. I, I love that. He actually says, stand back. This guy is mine. <laughs> it was awful. Uh, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, later on, they say the same burn black butt joke, but they go, hey, he's going to burn your ass. And he goes, yeah, but my ass is already burnt or black or whatever, right? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but this time, I bet you'll cut my dick too. Yeah, like, it's the weird. There's a few the dialogue there. is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Questionable. Everyone in this film kisses so grossly. <laughs> um, and you get to him and the restaurant owner now. Um, which bit with them? Uh, their little like date or whatever. So she well, there's, so there's so, a few bits before that because they they go to the the Japanese guy's house who's also having sex with a woman. Oh right. And then then we get the infamous kung fu fight. Which kung fu fight? One against the bald guy, the bald Japanese guy. Oh right. The one that lasts for 25 minutes. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah. Uh, they go to a guy's house, uh, the bad guy. He's he's this Japanese bald guy, and he's having Oh, sex. another henchman. Yeah. Not the main Japanese bad guy. He's having sex with a woman, by the way, kissing gross again. Gross. Uh, he's having sex with a woman, and they go, they're literally looking through his window, and they go, looks like this is his last ever fuck. Which is a great line. And yeah, I think they were just like, should we interrupt him or let him? Or someone was like, yeah, let him finish. And, and then there's just... a shootout outside the house. But if you look in the background, there's just got a guy, I swear, is the next door neighbor who isn't meant to be in the film. Just watching what's just going on. Just sat in the hood of a car, just watching. 
<laughs> it's amazing because he doesn't do anything. Like he's he's not part of the film. It's awful. Um. Then we uh. Then we get a a fight scene. We get our first official proper hand to hand fight scene. And do you know what? There are moments. I'm not gonna lie. There are moments in this film where the fight scene is almost okay. There's some moves where I'm just like, okay, that was all right. And then there are some strongly moves where disagree. Are, oh, yeah. Well, I, I I get what you mean. Um. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna skip over a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, there's a lot of the the bad guys are always threatening to break people's legs. Yep. They're like we're gonna break his legs. Go and send him over to break his legs. Um. They bring over a bunch of guys from New York, right? And they go, hey, these New York thugs, they're going to break their legs. The New York guys turn up, but the first thing they do is shoot at them. Yeah. And try and kill them. Uh, then we get the sex scene with the labia, uh, which is... So, basically, so when he he goes back... At some point, he goes back to the restaurant to talk to the blonde yeah. restaurant owner. And, you know, basically, he's like, let me take you out. And she was just like, you know, let me take you out tonight. And she's like, I'm busy tonight. She's like, let me take you out tomorrow night. And she's basically like, I'm busy. And he's like, okay, what about Sunday? And she's like, I gotta go to church. And so he's like, okay. So he... So then he just, on Sunday, shows up at her church. So shows up outside her church and like hey you know let me uh let me talk to you why don't you come to my car and 100 percent, i thought it was the next scene was going to be like them like doing it in his car but it wasn't um so he takes her to his house and cooks for her um and then you why are his him? couches so low to the ground <laughs> his couches are basically on the floor uh, i don't know but then they the show are basically on the floor next is them Next is them on the beach. Uh, why does him and his also, Why does he cook her a full rotisserie chicken? <laughs> I don't know. He's sure that he could cook. He's yes. trying to, you know. The beach part. He's trying to romance her. But then, yeah, he's in a Speedo. She's in a bikini. Rocking some mean Speedos. Yeah. And uh, then they're back in the house yeah. and doing it. And it's gross it goes on for far too long it, it's basically it's like weird. a like a weird like softcore like porn like you know yeah. that comes on late at night that used to come on late at night in cinemax but they don't advance it's basically just a makeout session because they yeah. don't advance the love making yeah there's it's not like he takes her panties off or anything they just kiss for ages no he like oh, first he the t- yeah yeah he does oh he does and then but it was nasty it went on for far too long it what if it made me fifteen minutes uncomfortable. I every single sex scene in this movie made me uncomfortable. Hated it. I didn't like watching it because I was watching it with you, and I was just like, oh, I bet Devin feels uncomfortable watching this because it's gross. It was <laughs> gross. gross. Yeah, yeah. Nothing about it was enjoyable. Nothing about it was okay to watch. Nothing about it was sexy. It was all the whole vibe. Just yeah, the whole vibe of this movie just made me upset also where did she get her bikini from oh yeah that yeah i mean that was also a thought that i had goes over to his house and then all of a sudden she's in a bikini did she take it with her or did he just have a bikini waiting around knowing him probably yeah he lets he's probably got straight a whole bunch of bikinis yeah he lets the ladies choose from oh do you want to so uh my nickname for him became samurai perv pervert samurai pervert then shortened it to samurai perv samurai perv yeah He's, oh, yeah, I guess he is. Yes, a he is. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Ugh. Um, if he's like literally going around banging like every chick, I, just walking STI. I got another line that just says, "I don't know what context this is, but I wrote it down." It just says, "I'm gonna leave you this black gift." <laughs> Rel- oh, it's oh. Black. So okay, so no, so all right, so the bad guys are now trying to find Frank. Or no, trying to find a uh, samurai perv, yeah. right? So first they go to uh, another police officer's house and kill him uh, and kill his uh, kill his wife. Uh, then they go to a blonde ho horny, cop, horny, cop. horny blonde cop, to her house and basically like suppose and burn her with like hot oil. Um, and like, where is he? Where is he? Um, no, no, no. They go to, do they go to her first or Frank first? Regardless. At one point, they show up at Frank's house. Frank had just gotten out of the shower. There's a towel around his waist. And so these bad guys, you know, have a gun to his head, remove the towel from it around his waist, 
and basically threatened to cut his dick off if Frank doesn't tell him where uh, Joe lives. And so, hang on, because I wrote it down. So basically, so one of them, yeah, one of them is holding uh, Frank's junk with like a knife, implying that there's a knife to it and they're going to cut it off. And so, and the the henchman, his line is, um, we're going to take away or or remove this black gift, referring to his penis. Yeah. I, at that, let me just tell you, at that line, you I had shut down and I was 100% done. Yeah. I, you're so lucky that I didn't just get up and walk away. Cause I was just like black gift referring to his dick. No, 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 no. Hated this movie. Hated it. So fucking gross. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of awful. Uh, but when uh Joe was having sex with uh the, the the restaurant owner, all the bad guys turn up at his place. I prayed to God that he was gonna take part in a shootout naked. I was like, oh my god, is he going to be naked? This is going to be the best thing ever. No, it's not. No, it wouldn't have been. He gets dressed. Yeah. He gets dressed. However, he gets dressed. He walks out through his backyard. There's a Wing Chun dummy in his backyard. Oh, really? Did you notice that? No, I didn't. Yeah. It was either a Wing Chun dummy or a uh, Choi Lee Fut dummy. I wasn't sure, but he's got some kind of Kung Fu dummy in his uh, backyard. Um, so like so he gets uh, Samurai Perv gets away and so him and Frank they're back at the police station the captain's angry again the captain's constantly angry in this movie and he's like because of you two he's like I'm gonna get fired and this whole time he's been telling them he's been trying to get them to rein it in but at this point he's like I'm gonna get fired you two fucking kill them all like kill them all you know, don't leave a single person alive. That's what, and That's what after, people weapons should be. And when you get back, we'll all turn in our badges. And I was just like, what the fuck? I was like, what just happened? That's a good police captain. I was like, what type of police officer? You're telling these officers to literally purposely break the law, continue, continue killing multiple folks, and then appear- and you're all just going to come back and just turn over your badges and quit not you know get arrested for all these all these murders it. not face any legal consequence just be like we're gonna kill everyone and then turn in our badge like we're done now and i was just like what is going on i want that to happen this in this whole weapon. movie they go back to the captain the captain's like fuck this let's just go yeah. bulls. captain was just bulls. like fuck it just kill everybody. And by the way, the uh, the restaurant owner goes back to her mom and goes, I'm in love. She's met this guy three times. Yeah. She's met the cop three times. Uh, um, yeah, so... And there was a fight. Uh, what did you think of the because I'm an undercover cop joke? Oh. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Stupid. Uh, the Frank goes underneath a fence. So yeah, they have to get it. They, yeah, they have to basically they have to get over this fence to get to the 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 bad the Chinese like gang leader or whatever get to his house. Uh, samurai hops over the fence and <laughs> uh, Frank just kind of wiggles underneath this gap and Samurai asks him, uh, "Why you why didn't you just go over the fence?" and he. And Frank is like, because I'm an undercover cop. And I was just like, got him. And then, uh, yeah, I was like, lame. You're not even an undercover cop. He's not. He's not. <laughs> you're not even an undercover uh, cop. Fast- if you are, you're a bad one. I'm uh, going to fast forward a little bit. Uh, basically, we get a showdown between uh, who Devin labeled Jaws. Uh, the American dad. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, Jaws. Jaws and the pervert. And they, they practice the code of Bushido. So they are both honorable warriors so we get a, a, a very very good sword fight you won't see you mean you won't see a better sword fight uh it's you know you think Roroni Kenshin's good you should check this film out so we get a sword fight so terrible it's fucking awful so terrible uh, it, i mean the choreo- the choreography isn't awful but the way it's filmed and captured and done, it's just terrible. It's terrible. Um, and he, you be- got it. I, yeah, yeah. I didn't get any sense of choreography at all. 
Oh, that was something in there. I felt like if me and you were going to play with swords, yeah, we would do it would just job. be that. Yeah. It would be exactly yeah, what they like did. That. Yeah. That was some stuff in there. Um, I'm giving it, I'm giving it some credit. You are, why. yeah. I don't know yeah. why. You are giving it far too much credit. Uh, he beats the guy with the big face. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, because he's an honorable samurai, he kills himself. Joe was going to let him live. He was just going to take him in. But he honored. The oh, yeah. So, okay. Oh, yeah. And this was crazy, too. So, Joe uh, uh, is about to kill him uh, with a sword. And then Frank is like, wait, you're a cop. And I was just like, what happened to, like 30 minutes ago when all of, when you and your captain agreed to fucking kill everybody? Yeah. <laughs> all of you were on board with doing that and then turning in your badges. And now, <laughs> now with this last guy, <laughs> this last person, this last henchman, <laughs> you're going to be like, no, no, no. Let me keep this one dude alive out of however many days that this absurdity went on. Yeah. And but then, the- then he, but then bad guy Jaws was like, no, no, no. I've lost this fight. You know, he's, oh, he's not going to kill me. I will kill myself. And then we end the film with some sweet lovemaking. A little bit of extra lovemaking on back the beach. Back to the beach. Back to the beach and back in the Speedos. And they get on this, what looked to be a very large, uncomfortable boulder. And yes. uh, him and blonde, uh, blonde restaurant chick uh, proceed to make out. And that was the end of the movie. And I'm, I... My last note I'm proud of. I just say, What's this mine? film should be called Mullets and Bullets. Not bad, not bad. A lot of mullets in this film. Not bad, not bad. I thought it was quite solid. Lots of mullets in this film. Crazy mullets. Um, but they're, they're like 90 star mullets. It's just, yeah. It, there's a guy that looks like Rowdy Roddy Piper in this film. It's just, it's it's a lot to look out for. Hated this um, movie. You could, you, could play, like, uh, you could play bingo with this film and just, it would be a good old time. Um, but obviously, Devin didn't care for it. Hated it. Um, I don't know. I think if you like... It's a dumpster fire full of poop. If you like shitty films in ironic ways, then I think you can have a lot of I do, I do. There are definitely shitty films that I like. I mean, Miami Connection, perfect example. I'm sure there's another one that we've done. New York Ninja. We haven't done um, that yet, but I but, think we enjoy that. But because this one wasn't done well, because they kept these awful takes, because there's no editing, uh, yeah, everything about it is terrible. I had fun. I had fun. I'm glad you did. Yeah. I bet. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure Cyrus would have hated. Cyrus would love it. Cyrus you think have... Cyrus would have loved oh, it? Cyrus had a great time with it. You are joking, aren't you? I mean, they're titties, so I guess he would have. I oh, definitely would have loved the titties. Yeah. Um. But uh, I think I think I think it's fun, but it's not a film that I would watch over and over again at all. Oh, I, no. I I I would. Yeah, I would never watch or I wouldn't watch this again for a long, long time. And also, I have no interest in watching Samurai Cop Two. So, um, yeah. The fact that there's a two. Yeah, but I think they made the second one ironically, like they made it all purposely right. bad. Uh, so I don't I don't like that idea. Uh, the first one's good because they didn't mean to make it as bad as it is. Anyway, you want to jump into listener questions? Sure. We've All got right. a little time left. Yeah, we've got a little time. We're trying to keep it keep it slim uh, this episode. So uh, I don't think you can answer this one, but I'm going to try. A mock pal asks, my question is, what deleted scene from a movie completely changed the movie for you? But you're not a big deleted scene person, are you? Yeah, that's the question that I probably would have needed in advance yeah. to Yikes. figure it out. Yeah, it very yeah, very rarely do I ever watch. I'm most certainly yeah. I mean, I feel like what like deleted scenes that you would see like in special features on a Blu-ray, mm-hmm. and I don't do that. Yeah. Or and it's been years since I did that. So yeah, I could I could only think of two. Go. Uh, I think one of them is the deleted scene from Kill Bill Volume 1 where Michael Jai White fights David Carradine um, because Bill in Kill Bill he's never shown to be a good martial artist. There's no reason why we should fear Bill in Kill Bill because his skills are never shown. He's just an old man who happens to have a good 
gang behind him who do the murdering for him. I, I get it, he's a bad guy, he's a piece of shit, but we're never shown that he's skillful. However, in the deleted scene where he fights Michael Jai White, he kills him in seconds and like does a really, really good job. And it actually shows that he's a martial artist and that he's good with the sword. But we don't see that. We just hear about it, you know, how he was Pai Mei's equal or whatever, but we never actually see it. So I think had they left the Michael Jai White scene in, people would have got a better feel as to, oh, yeah, Bill's fucking serious. Interesting. The other one, and I think this one is huge, is the deleted scene. And a lot of people talk about this one, so I'm kind of jumping on the coattails of a lot of, like, internet people. Uh, The deleted scene in Terminator 2, when they talk about... um, the bit in Terminator 2 where they say, can you learn? And um, you never work out whether he can learn or not as a Terminator. But in the lead scene, he actually says there's a switch in a Terminator's brain where you can actually flick the switch and he can start feeling emotion and learning and understanding humans are becoming more human. And apparently in the deleted scene, which I haven't seen in years, I can't remember it that well, they actually flick the switch in Arnold's brain that makes him more human. And that's why in Terminator 2, at the end, you know, he's emotional. He's like, you know, don't he wipes John Connor's tears and, you know, he does the whole thumb thing and he becomes more emotional, he becomes more human. There's a reason for that. Now, if they'd kept that law in the entirety of Terminator, it would make way more sense and it would be more interesting in that Terminators can become more human. And it would also explain why in Terminator Dark Fate, he has a wife and kids and he loves them it would explain because his brain got switched okay anyway that's what i think um uh aaron vargas a of our stunts that's a v a r stunts check him out on instagram and twitter and all that good stuff he's a uh a, a, a burgeoning uh stunt man and uh, he's super talented, uh, super cool guy as well. He says, if there's one movie this year that you could that you would want to watch for the first time again, what would it be? Oof. Oof. One movie this year that I would want to watch again for the first time. Um, what have you got? I, I My answer's ridiculous because it's the one film that absolutely broke me. Uh, I have never had a film break me like this emotionally. I wept like a child. I struggled with it. I had a small mental breakdown after the film was done. Uh, it, it it was just too much for me. And that is the film Past Lives. It's my favorite film of the year. It's by far the best film of the year. I absolutely love it. But my God, did it fuck me up. I It's so fucking sad. And... I, I, I don't know. For some people, it doesn't affect... Like They just, oh, Past Lives is okay. For me, for some reason, it shattered me. Um, and I would like to experience that again. I know that's strange to say, but it's so rare that you come across a movie that affects you like that, where you actually go through this series of emotions and feel very specific feelings. Um, you know, some some uh, tragic films, some romance films, uh, you know, Eternal Sunshine, for example, that might make, might make you feel sad, but this one, this killed me, and I would I would love to watch a film again that put me through that many emotions, even if it was in a very heartbreaking way. So, past lives. If you haven't seen it, and you are someone that likes an emotional ride, that someone who doesn't mind getting a bit teary eyed, I highly recommend it. It's 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 my number one film of the year. It'll be number one on my top ten of the year list, uh, which I should probably work on tomorrow. Um, yeah. Um, I don't have anything like that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I thought suppose... you had an obvious answer. I had an obvious answer f- for you. What? I thought you'd want to watch John Wick Four for the first time again. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad. We're seeing uh, Godzilla minus one tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but honestly, like looking through my list, um, of films that I watched this year. Do you know, uh, so the movie that I absolutely, positively 
thoroughly just enjoyed and made me feel just very happy. Mm. Um, and I would not mind. And it was the first time singing in the rain. Oh, yeah. it's just a very lovely, just joyful, just fantastic, enjoyable musical. And it's and I I I very much enjoyed it. And yeah, it made me feel good. Made me feel happy. I love the songs. I just loved. I love the dancing. Just loved everything about it. I agree. And yeah, I would have no problem watching that again for the first time. Yeah, it's a very uh, uplifting yeah. film. It is. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's just great to watch. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's a very good answer. Yeah, I think I think that's, yeah, that's a great one. And yes, we watched uh, Singing in the Rain for the first time in 2023, which to some people might be crazy, but, you know, we take some time to get around to some films. Yep. Um, Martial Arts Film Freak asks... A uh, question inspired by the film Leave the World Behind, uh, which is currently on Netflix. He says, if you were stuck in a doomsday bunker with a Blu-ray player for an unforeseeable amount of time, what one movie and one TV box set would you want to have? Ooh. Oh, boy. Movie's a hard one. I think TV box set. Honestly, I think for TV box set, I would go Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, that's a re really interesting so choice. Fun. I Yeah, yeah love that show. Good show. The show was great. Uh, it has so many funny moments in it. Just genuinely enjoyable. Uh, I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nine-Nine! Um, Rest in peace. I know, right? Andrew Brower. Mm. Mm. He's great. <laughs> He's great. Um, movie. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. What movie could you enjoy again and again? You know what? This is just... Mwah. Uh, Tremors. Yeah, that's a great one. You got two good answers there. Yeah. Tremors, 100%. I don't know if I can top those, uh, to be honest. That's right. Um. Movie, yeah, I would go for something. It's just got to be something that's purely entertaining, right? Yeah. No, nothing that's too deep and philosophical or emotional or anything like that. Something that's just just fucking flat out entertainment. I'm gonna... or like or like a you know or another uh, or a crazy like action like. A... I was just about to go. That was yeah. my. That was oh, my okay, which one? I was gonna go probably Terminator Two. See, but that's a level of seriousness. I like. I meant like. Uh, I meant just like a dumb or just you know like, you know, nineties action lethal like weapon. a like a lethal yeah. weapon. Oh, Die or... Hard would be a great one. Yeah, I've seen Die Hard too much, so I wouldn't pick Die Hard. Okay. Um, Terminator Two is quite long, so I'd get a lot out of it. Oh, if I Die Hard is a treat. I do love Die Hard. No, not Die Hard. Lethal Weapon. Uh, I, I, these days, I would see Die Hard was my favorite action film growing up. I loved it more than anything. But these days, I'm beginning to take Lethal Weapon over Die Hard. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I'm starting to think I might like Lethal Weapon better. Um, I'm gonna go for Terminator Two though, just simply Without because speed. No, no, it's a great yeah. film. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah, it's, it's great. yeah, but not yeah. There's yeah, but... yeah. I could take like some fight filled kung fu film, but. No, I think T2 would be a good one. As for TV series, um, I would actually take Red Dwarf, uh, believe it or not. Out of all the TV series I would take, Red Dwarf. Um, I grew up absolutely loving Red Dwarf for the first nine seasons. And then I left UK and came over to the US and I never saw the rest of the show. And I know they went up to like 21 seasons. So I'd be able to watch all the seasons that I loved and watched over and over and over and over. But I'd also get to watch the seasons that I had. Yeah, there isn't seen. enough of Brooklyn Nine Nine. There's not very, there's what, like six, five or six seasons? I think. Supernatural? That's another you one. You have a Supernatural t shirt. I do, yeah. Supernatural. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I did very much enjoy Supernatural, though the later seasons were meh, but it's solid, a solid watch. But no, no, I, I'm going to stick to my two, Tremors and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay, good answer. Great answers. Um, he also asked, Sean, if you could make a modern ensemble girls with guns film directed by Chad Stahelski, what five current actresses would you cast? It doesn't have to be women in action. He says, bring in Meryl Streep if you want. <laughs> okay. I was thinking about this the other day, right? Okay. This, this is what I want to happen. Okay. 
I want someone to take, I don't know what to call them, um, like unexpected actresses and make them action badasses. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha, I, want gotcha, them, gotcha. I want someone to subvert expectations. So one of them would be, I don't think I know how to say her name, but I'm going to take a swing at it. Ao Adabiri. Yikes. I think Ao Ao. You talking about from the bear? Yeah. Oh, okay. So the girl from the bear, uh, or one of the girls from the bear, the uh, uh, what the main black chick. Yeah. The, the black uh, chick from from the bear. Um, her because I just watched her in Bottoms, and I think she's amazing in that film, and I think she's wonderful anyway. So I'd want her to be like an action super. Like imagine her just being a fucking badass in the film. It'd be awesome. Like I think someone's done that recently in that they've taken Anya Taylor Joy and put it in Furiosa. I didn't think Anya Taylor Joy would ever be in an action film, but or like True. a big action film where True. she's a badass. But you know, I think I think it works with her Furiosa. So I would do Ao Edabiri, which I'm not sure I got her name right. Um I would go for who else do I like at the moment? Hmm. Hmm. I would go for the girl who the Asian girl from Iron Fist. The one that played what was her name? Connie. I never watched Iron Fist. You didn't? No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at uh, look her up then, because um, I don't I don't want to I don't want to go ahead without getting it right. Iron Fist, Fist, there it is, Jessica Henwick. That's her name, Jessica Henwick. She played Colleen Wang Wing. Sorry, Jessica Henwick. Putting her in there as well. Um. I think I would go for Millie Bobby Brown. Okay. Throw her in there. She's a bit small. But hey, she could be a badass. She could be a sniper. Make her a sniper or something. That'd be interesting. Just because she's small don't mean she can fight. That's true. She's in an action film. She's uh she's in an action film called Damsel that's coming out, like a fantasy action film. Okay. So, you know, they're 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 doing it for her. Um they did it with Joey King in The Princess. You know? Oh yeah. She looked badass in that. Um, two others, I don't want to keep this uh, question going for too long, but two others, uh, let's see, I'm going to go for, what films have I seen recently? I am going to go for, I'm getting stumped. Oof. I'm getting stumped. What's... You're sticking, oh, but yeah, with like. No, no, any actress will do now. Sedania. S- 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 Boo. <laughs> Boo. Boo? Zendaya? 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 How are you yeah. saying her name? Yeah. Boo. Okay. Boo, I'm not having that. All right, fine. Yeah. Uh, oh, I tell you, I, I tell you who will definitely... Okay. Um, The girl that's in... Oh, Jesus. It's going to be difficult. Yeah, right. The new Kirst- Kristen Stewart film. The one where she plays uh, a lesbian lady that falls in love with the bodybuilder. Um... So hold on, I'm gonna find the film now. It's like blood, blood bleeds, sweat or something. Uh, I'm, I've got that completely wrong. It's called. I've got it up now. Blood bleeds sweat. Yeah, it's not called that. It's called Love Lies Bleeding. <laughs> Love Lies Bleeding. Not Kristen Stewart, but um, what's the other girl's name? No oh. idea. Never even heard of this film. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture of her. Um, I just, I, I can't remember. Looking up the film. Yeah. Why isn't it listing her? Are you sure? Did you pass her? No, I'm. 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 Oh, there she is. Uh, Katie O'Brien. Um, go ahead. Right, put this into Google for me. Right, mm-hmm. Katie with a Y, and then O'Brien with an A for Brian, and then just put the word muscles after it, please. She is. Fucking strong. What have I seen her in? Have I, I seen know. her in anything? I don't know what you've seen her in. But she's a she's a a, a powerful lady. And... Mandalorian. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Yes, yes. Katie O'Brien would be one of them. 
Uh, she was also in Ant Man uh, and Quantum Mania as well. Don't but remember her, in that. her arms are massive. She's a big old girl, um, and I think she would be absolutely awesome. And yes, I do think she should play Abby in uh, Last of Us season two uh, TV series. Um, and then my last one, I'll take Zendaya. Let's throw her in there. Why not? Why not throw her in there? No, I'm going to change it. Someone who deserves more credit because I think she's amazing is Judd Apatow's daughter. Uh, I can't remember her first name. She's a really, really good actress. And I'm not saying she'll be an amazing action actress, but throw her in anyway, because I think she deserves more respect. So, yeah, throw in that. I like newcomers. I like new faces. I don't like to go towards, like, old classics. So, Charlize Theron, she's done her thing. Anna de Armas, she has fucking ballerina coming out. We need new faces in these action films. And someone needs to take some daintier, smaller women and make them fucking badasses. So, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, I think... Hour and 16? Yes. All right, let's see if we can rattle these two off. Um, okay, so, uh, Rama, I'm going to hold yours till next episode because I want Cyrus to be able to answer it. So, Rama, I'll get around to yours. Uh, the last one is from Alpha Rookie. Alpha Rookie asks, question for the next pod. How much time do you spend on social media daily, weekly, explicitly for the Foo for Thought promotion? Oh. That includes your watching this movie. We'll review it in two hours when I finish. Uh, they're the tweets I send out. Basically, anything that isn't your mum jokes or about rap music. Posting kung fu clips and the like. I'll have you know, I spend many hours on my mum jokes. So just be aware. <laughs> that probably takes up most of my time. <laughs> um, too much. Too much time. Um, for Food for Thought, I am on social media all day. All day, every day. Uh, not just... I, I have my personal account, obviously, where I do that stuff. Um, but actual kung fu content and martial arts and action cinema content, all day. All day, every day. Uh, I'm constantly looking for fight clips. I'm constantly looking for new movies. Uh, it's just something I do all the time. Um, the only thing I don't do um, is I'm not one of those people, maybe I should be, that checks views. How many views have we got? How many views have we got? How many listens have we got? I don't do that at all. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't promote the podcast as much as I should do, I suppose. Um, but with regards to content, I'm always looking for stills and images and kung fu clips. I'm sure, Devin, there's plenty of times where you go to the kitchen and all you hear is pap, 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 yeah, yeah, from my phone. Oh, yeah, when I, you're in the bathroom. When I'm in the bathroom, <laughs> I'm always watching fights. I'm always, always, always looking for stuff. My phone right now, uh, the photo section, is absolutely full of kung fu clips and uh, kung fu images. Absolutely full. I've got more photos of Alexander Fusheng than I do of Devon. Um, <laughs> it's it's just, yeah. Uh, so th the actual answer to the question is too long. Uh, I, sp I spend way too long, and um, it's it's unhealthy, and both me and Devon are addicted to our phones, just like everyone else in the world. For me, though, it's very little. Like, outside of watching the film and then recording the oh, episode. You don't do fuck all. Uh, yeah, I don't do anything. I... Uh, I do, um, I have the Facebook, because uh, Sean isn't on Facebook, so, and nor did he want to be, so he'll send me posts for me to put on uh, Facebook, but also, but yeah, like, and I don't, yeah, and I don't promote the podcast, but also because my, like, my Instagram is my personal Instagram, and no offense to any of you who listen, but I don't want everybody up on my personal Instagram. Uh, a part of me is, you know, wondering if I should create a strictly foo for thought one. But it didn't seem like it's no. necessary. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Oh no, I could have maybe I could like generate I could maybe but if I, you know, were I could have full access, you know, my personal Instagram is about our lives and yeah. work and, you know, and you know, I don't need all of you guys privy to all of that so but if i had like a strictly food for thought one then of course maybe i it would be i could uh participate in uh advertising you know 
chat with you lovely people um if you wanted um and you could write like the name of the next film on your feet and like post a picture of your feet and get people in that way that too uh, get all the weirdos in yeah i could do that too so i don't know shaming <laughs> like nothing wrong with that so, I'm not to uh, a part of me is wondering if i should but then yeah then that would just mean i'd be probably on social media even more yeah we don't need that so, neither of yeah. us need that like, right. like like i said like everyone else in the world right now who is addicted to their phones and we all are addicted to our phones we're on the phone non-stop all day every day all of it most of us yeah we're, the only, we're, yeah. we're part of that the only time is yeah I'm, I'm at work because you know work is busy and i'm on my feet and i'm moving around and i'm doing things so that's probably when i'm at work is really when if i'm not you know not outside of like my lunch break than that but otherwise yeah during the day during weekdays i'm on it less but then as soon as i get off work and when i come home yeah if i was on facebook i would literally be on social media all the time because on facebook is where all the kung fu cinema communities are so that's where all the chat room whatever chat whatever you call a message whatever that's where everyone chats um and everyone chat channels i suppose you call it that's where all the chat channels are where all the people that have youtube channels and chat channels is that what they're called i don't know what they're called what what do they call them i don't know group yeah. chats or message boards or i don't know i don't chat rooms i don't know my person yeah i i'm not on facebook i mean i'm on, i i have a personal facebook account which i never look at <laughs> no what i'm saying so is i don't know i don't know what it's called i don't know what yeah, it's so many people from like various youtube channels and various like uh, corners of the kung fu community kung fu cinema community they chat it up on facebook and I am not on there because otherwise I would chat with those people all day, every day because I love talking to people that share this love. Um, I don't do it enough. I don't do it nearly as much as I should. I don't engage people on my Instagram as much as I should. But if I started doing that, it would be a full-time hobby and I would do it at, at all times. Um, so yeah, I'm on it enough. I'm on it all the time. And most of the time, it's just trying to find content for the Instagram page and you know wherever else I post it, Twitter and places like that. Um, that's all it is. I just go digging. That's it. Uh, most of the time. So, yeah, there you go. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank Our patrons. Ooh. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. We have a Patreon. And can I just say, before he starts listing off our patrons, um, yeah, our Patreon, admittedly, we have haven't been good about keeping up with it lately. There have been a number of delays, I think, and I think we mentioned this on our last episode because, you know, Sean was unwell and then for a while and then we had things going on and then the holidays came and just uh, so you know we have uh been lax in providing content to you lovely people who are paying for it and i apologize for that i'm greatly uh uh sorry this week you know we were talking about the commentary um and yeah my hope was since it was Christmas, this we were all three of us, me, Sean, and Cyrus, were off this whole week, and I was just like, let's do the commentary during the week. But these dudes uncooperative, and then Cyrus got himself sick, so we're gonna do the commentary this weekend. So probably what, maybe Monday, tomorrow, or tomorrow, something like that. One of them. Yeah, and just to say, we're going to pick up the content for the Patreon as well. Yes. Um, I know that doesn't sound very alluring to anyone else who isn't part of the Patreon. They're like, well, I'm not going to do it. I understand. But in the new year, specifically, I'm going to pick up and start doing a lot more stuff for the Patreon, um, including a lot more um, um, commentary tracks. Yeah, we're a lot very, more very sorry. Reviews. Just a lot of stuff is coming. I feel quite way. shameful. Yeah, but thank you for sticking with us we yes. really really appreciate it and thank yes. you for supporting us um those good people that do support us are miles alpha rookie Woo! speak of the devil nick shane nicholas amok pal rama disconnected tristan robert Yay. article dropouts eloquent Hello. james don jitsu Good. tina and the benjamin Dawn, tina benjamin yay thank you patrons yeah, all you of guys you guys are beautiful amazing people you are beautiful amazing people thank yeah. you for sticking with us even yeah. though we're you're a bunch of fucking losers. There's more coming your way, I promise you. Just just hold on. Yes. It's right around the corner. Yes. Um anyway. Thank you so much. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. We appreciate you uh, being along for the ride uh, that is Samurai Cup. Hated it! Uh, hopefully next episode we will have uh, a little man called Cyrus on with us. Uh, hopefully he'll be well and not be such a rich <laughs> Um And we will be going... With, ugh, I didn't say oh, we won't that. have... Yeah, we won't have to be home and deal with our stupid fucking cat. Yep. But Love will, her, though. We will be dipping our toes back into Shaw Brothers next episode. Uh, we will be watching Shaolin Intruders. Uh, that will be the next episode, Shaolin Intruders. Um, so uh, if you want to know how you can get hold of that, I believe it's on the Shout Shaw Collection, Volume 4, um, that's just come out. Possibly Volume 3, but I think it's on Volume 4. It's on Volume 4. Um, and there she is, the devil herself. All right, guys, we'll wrap this up. Thank you so much. Take care, and we will catch you next time. Yeah, buddy.